heavy equipment that stays at eight. Commercial thousand. vehicles are Correct. Not right. Only for class one. I need it to close You'll include class one at class seventy five percent of what the total line item is. Right. Mm -hmm. right. That's correct. The That's count the county didn't even change the rate on the boats and all that. They didn't change rate the rate on that, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm sorry, who made the motion and second? Miss uh, Jones made the motion. Mm -hmm. All right, we have a motion. It's been duly seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor, let's see. No. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Did y'all vote down there? Aye. Five, aye. five zero. <laughs> All right. Anything <laughs> else under uh, accounting finance? The two other items. Eric, you want me to go? Yeah, you're good. Okay, garbage rates. Um, as you know, the county has dramatically increased garbage tipping rates only for towns, not for county residents. We're all county residents, or everybody, including towns, I, that may have been forgotten, but the new policy presented by the county administrator and adopted as part of the budget requires a $42 per ton tipping fee for the three towns, but not for anybody that uses the green boxes in the county. It's ridiculous. It makes no sense. Um, it's discriminatory, and it's poor governance. That's on top of the $3 already being charged. That's on top of the $3. Now, Ted has indicated, oh, y'all just keep that three bucks, but I'm not sure we can because I think it's actually, and you may remember, Mayor, when it was adopted, that's actually money for the maintenance of the landfill. That's correct. It's okay. Isn't it called the Consumer Utility Tax? Is that uh, what it is? No, I don't think that's what okay. it is. It's just a $3 charge, landfill charge on your bill. Uh, he said keep it, but I dare say, based on what I've seen with the other handling of this, that's probably not accurate. Jake is pointing something out to me, and he can take the floor if he wants to, but Jake said it's the county money. We quit charging it. Let the county collect it. I think so. Quit Take charging the $3? Quit charging let it them, completely. Let them collect it. It's their money. Why are we doing their business anyway? As long as it's not codified. I, I, I think it's not required. I think it's codified. It was a big deal in 1996. The towns and the county all came together. i never forget it. They all... It was a big fuss. People were fussing about a $3 charge, and that's what it's been since 96. The problem is we've got in-town and out-of-town customers, so we're going to have to segregate some pay, don't pay, all that kind of stuff. So I like his idea if it can be done without a, you know, we might have to procedurally do something to make that I happen. I think that there's more to it than making that decision tonight. Okay. We've got to figure out what we can and can't do with that 3 bucks. Right. If the $3 were not collected, not collected, the net effect to the town is $146,000 based on 7,706,000 pounds of waste last year, okay? The number increases because, as you know, sludges, which we generate about 350 tons of sludge a year at the wastewater plant, that's charged now at $200 a ton. And tires are $200 a ton as well when we carry those to them. Um, the net effect to the town, if the $3 is not factored, is about $75,000 a year on sludge and $146,000 a year for uh, municipal waste. That's not in your budget. And like I said, and let the record reflect, this is bad governance. This is not good. On top of a PPTRA um, rate that's doubling on people, but this is bad governance because it does not spread the cost fairly across all county it's citizens. It's not equitable. And I, I do know that I, I anticipate the supervisors meet Thursday. I've been told they're going to have a pretty packed house on a variety of issues. And, they should. And the personal property one. tax is one of them, and then and this issue would be another one. But I'll write, I'll write a letter as recommended and get that to them before Thursday. So you're saying that it's going to total increase to us would be $221,000? 146 and 75 yeah. Yeah. Not in the budget. Not in the budget. Now you've got three bucks per meter in the budget with seventy six thousand. Right, so we but keep if we that. Can we use that? Huh? Can we can we use that? I we don't, don't know. If we can if we cannot not collect it, I don't think we can use it. In my opinion. Yeah. I got to work on the three bucks. I'm not sure there, but I can tell you if the three bucks is not factored, and it's still a fee that the county gets to keep, you got a two hundred twenty one thousand dollar deficit in your budget. So oh, was, just just to recap, which I'm I'm of understanding, but just to say it out loud. County is charging town residents three dollars per meter, Peter. as well as charging the other county residents, not in town, three dollars per. Everybody meter. gets correct. Whether Dominion collects, the right. side collects, and we collect it, the town crew collects, and whoever. But the town that includes seventy nine thousand yeah. dollars. Yes, but they're double dipping on the town by then charging the town only the towns to give a service by taking that trash, which is 
It's ridiculous. It's it makes no sense. Giant double dip. And I'll add to it, Ted swears that he told Brian Costin and I. He did not tell us, and I did not report. I looked at the minutes. It was only for rubbish, tearing down a house or an adopt a truck, something like that. It's $42 a ton. He absolutely did not tell us, and that's confirmed because the town of Cruz said, we didn't put anything in the budget either. No. We never heard of this. It was never – I think some supervisors – I don't mind telling you, I'm not going to speak for supervisors, but I do believe some supervisors were caught off guard because I, there was never a discussion at the budget level. This would be something that would be trumpeted, and you want to make sure everyone knows that's being taken place, and no, there was and zero only discussion. For town yeah. Only for town residents. But I got a question. Crazy. I see where you put in here that you were meeting with other entities, private and public. I, Getting quotes. To explain it to you. Um, Good. Well, we don't want to have to do it. You've got a $28 a ton quote from a Lunenburg facility. From a facility. But there's a transportation cost getting the way set. In our immediate area, there's only one other county that operates a municipal landfill, and that's Prince Edward County. And they're out of town rates, which is $44 a ton. Okay. So, they're at 42. Amelia, um, we've already said Lunenburg, but Amelia was over $36 a ton. Government subsidized landfills are significantly higher than the private private sector. Well, I don't know if Ted put that kind of methodology into it. I think he called Prince Edward and they told him forty dollars for in town or in county, forty four for out of county. So he just cut the difference. So he's trying to play with Prince Edward. Well, I would think so. We, we don't want to beat this dead horse, but you know the county has a forty five million dollar year budget and twenty three million dollars in the bank. So um, mm -hmm. well, we Sheila and I discussed at, during the committee that. Um, we're not going to, we were not going to suggest during that meeting to actually go up on the rates at that time with, on the leachate rates to the county. It all inter intermingles, right. so it's just a big ball of mess. It is. Um, yeah. That we're playing with not the town money or the county money. We're playing with the pockets of each citizen. And so That's who's going to pay it. That's I right. want to bear on the side of caution and let us look like, and, and we are the good guy in this. Let's write a letter to the county. Ask the mayor to write it yep. and express our concern for it and see if they move any. If they don't, then yes, we will have to look at somebody go up else. and go up on the leach eight rates. Well, at the end of the day, if they want to be market rate and that's the rule they want to set, then we're going to have to be market rate as well. To Mr. Costin sat right where Mr. Thomas was sitting when we had this meeting with the Accountant Finance Committee, and they said no rates would increase. Right. No the, the, the chair, I don't, and I don't mind telling you, and the town staff's been copied on some of these emails, the, the mayor of Burkeful and crew and the chairman of the board, the chair of the board is very concerned about this, and she, this is going to be a big discussion topic Thursday night, so I think there'll be some headway. Um, I don't know if it's going to stay at zero, but I sure hope it does. But I'll write that letter. We need to move on because we've got a lot still on our agenda. Um, moving right along to consent agenda, we have two items that were added. The first is um, Ms. April Thompson has asked that for the Henderson family that's going through a tough loss right now, uh, on this coming Saturday and Sunday, July 23rd and 24th, a part, part of Third Street be closed just because they're anticipating a large family gathering. I'd ask council to support that request, uh, working through the police chief, um, as we did for the vigil down on Luke Street uh, last month. So moved. Is there a second? All right, Mr. Miller moved and Ms. Jones is seconded. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries 5-0. And then Ms. Peggy Sue Moore is planning to have two events in the town square. Um, this is coming before council. Is it because there's alcohol being sold? or no, just because of the noise ordinance. Because she's requesting a waiver of the noise ordinance. What dates are we talking about? Um, <clears throat> so she has one here for October 8th okay. from 4.30 to 9. Okay. And then she has another one on September 3rd from 4 to 10. Any idea? What, I mean, not one, um, just one band? In October, it's a vintage country band. Okay. And on September 3rd, it's a classic rock band. These hmm. are not a profit event, correct? There are no tickets, there's no cost, and there's no alcohol. and Just something for the community. I move to approve the we'll two requests um, that okay. presented with the noise ordinance being waived up until 10 p.m. Second. Yeah. All right, motion been made and duly seconded. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries 5-0. I had a question. Yes. Suppose now, okay, we approve this. 
And she comes back and says, well, I want to get alcohol. What would happen? You got to come back with his counsel. And she's got to get a tulip policy. That's a whole other, you got to be approved. Okay. And just for clarification, for the Henderson family on 3rd Street, it's the street is going to be from Amelia to Brunswick. College. College. College, yes. So it's just that street. Really? Between college and the Henderson house is the only one that faces 3rd Street right there. So it's from Amelia to college. Yeah. I didn't realize that. Okay. I thought it was one block further. I thought it was one block lower. Right. That's right. Oh. I was getting second, I third. Like what, about, what about if it's BYOB? Do they still have to have tulip policy? If it's a stated policy that's BYOB, I would think they'd have to. But there's you, you can't drink on town property unless you, I mean, I can't just go to town, town square right now and pop open okay. up. So, no I mean, matter, either it's way. It sounds like a good house. idea right now. Any alcohol on town property. We'll do that in here. But no, that's a game. That's a rule. To, if she if she changes her plans, they must be presented to council, okay. and that's for anybody. Okay. That's for anybody. All right, going to unfinished business. You have your collection attorney bid. We're trying to do something new on our delinquent tax collections. This is a new firm called Tax T A C S. Uh, they're used by Amelia County, several other counties. Um, they provided us with a contract. Uh, you had some questions at the last council meeting about. Tessie's comment that 20% was the statutory limit for collections, and I think he included an email. Um, the reason why 25 is uh, permissible if it goes to uh, litigation, yeah. okay, based on state code. So it would be 20 for a standard collection and 25 if it goes to litigation or a tax sale. Thank you, David and Renee. Thank, Thank you all so much. Bye -bye. Thank you. And I think you guys approved it last month, but you just wanted that explanation. I wasn't here, so I Remember, but uh, it's been executed and authorized, okay? And if you read his uh, email, it tells you why he is permitted to get uh, up to 25%. All right. Okay. For the town manager's recommendation, you heard the recommendation by the treasurer last month. Members of council, what's your pleasure? So moved. Moved to approve. Is it a motion been made by Mr. Miller, seconded by Ms. Williams? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Uh, the Board of Zoning Appeals, I will have a name. I'm very close at the next month. It's, it's not easy. You're being chastised. It's going to be very, I'm very close. Very you close. said that last month. I'm <laughs> really, no, I'm really close. I'm really close. Is it going to be you because you're, since you're not going to be We're not going to go into all that right now. <laughs> <laughs> not going to. Uh, um, but we, you do have a request that BZA members be paid the same as planning We're going to start meeting more often parking spaces and stuff as things have, and the BZA has had to meet on a more regular basis. We started playing the planning commission $50 per meeting last year and I'd like to do the same. I didn't include it in the budget but I don't think it's going to be a tremendous amount of yeah. money anyhow. But Five uh, members who probably meet four times a year or five times a year. I think we're meeting more often now but um, I think four would be the the trend or if you looked at the average over several years. No charter, sh no, no changes needed to the all right, I'd entertain a motion to begin paying the BZA members $50 a meeting, which is what the planning commissioners are now being paid. So moved. Ms. Jones has moved. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Allman has seconded. Any further discussion? I'll have a roll call vote just in case by some token, by some chance, it becomes more than 10000 a year. I can't imagine. Ms. Williams, start with you. Aye. 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 Motion carries 5 0. And Philip, that will come. From administration, it, it, for the money we collect for like um, um, rezoning fees and that sort of thing. Um, next, you have the old school. Let's see, you have the concrete bid. I'm sorry, we have, we discussed last month the concrete bid, and I think there was some confusion how we do it. The reason we do it this way is so that we don't have multiple contractors being awarded separate activities, curb and gutter or sidewalk. We put all the activity concrete, including drop inlets and valley gutters. We put it all into one, and the only legal, reasonable way several years ago that we could come up with to award was on, based on the total. Because if you didn't base on total, you would be basing on activity, curb and gutter, sidewalk, that sort of thing. And what we wanted to avoid is having multiple contractors, having multiple contracts. We wanted to do it as one. I, have, I don't have the money for $721,000. I don't think I'll have the money for $721,000, but this does give us the uh, unit prices. So if we go to Jason and say, we'd like you to build a sidewalk from- We know uh, what we're paying. Seven to eight, there it is. And, uh, and we will pay on the unit price and not on that total contract price. All right, does that give, uh, there was some concern last month, is that it's, it's what we've done in the past, mm -hmm. but in the past it was much cheaper, but obviously costs have gone up and, you know, 
we're, we're more than likely uh, going to do less work because of the economy and the and price. Just, because of cash flow, for sure. Is doing it sole source, or not sole source, sorry, I was thinking about the previous thing. Is doing it lump sum the reason for possibly only getting one bid? Because some people don't do curb and gutter, some people you know, I'll don't. I'll be honest with you. I don't know of another concrete contractor that's as aggressive here. We bid it out locally. Yeah. Harmon Saunders has bid it on on occasion, and I asked him if he was interested in bidding any concrete right now. He said, man, I can't find enough guys to do pipe work, so I'm having a hell of a time. So, um, no, I think the reason that we don't get a lot of bids is because we don't widely put it out, maybe on Evo. Maybe that's something we should do in the future, but um, – we advertise it locally, and we've got a local wrong, contractor that's that can do the work. Just the fact that I'm, I always like to be able to compare, sure. right. and I probably can tell you Jason would be cheaper. Still, he's still local, yeah. He but, and he's very easy to work with. I mean, we ask him like uh, he did a transformer and uh, generator pad for us on two days' notice at VMAX, so which is reimbursable. But and uh, the quality of work is is good, very very good. We need a motion, ladies and gentlemen, to approve this uh, this unit price capped at seven hundred twenty one thousand dollars which we won't see this year won't even get close to it no mr nash is moved i'll give the second to mr allman i'll have a roll call vote starting with miss williams aye 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 motion carries five zero under the old school building um the town manager is requesting that we hold off signing until we see how things go with Nottoway county we've got a lot of irons in the fire we should and remove it from unfinished business in my opinion yeah. All right. It. Um, this but is I can talking about demol. This is talking about demolition of the of the one story building and at a later date the two story building over there on School and Oak Street. The agreement that was signed by the school system does reflect the changes the council asked for, which was a community center and other things like that. But um, the building is blighted. Uh, I'm prepared if we can't put things together. I would ask council to allow me to proceed on with the process of declaring it blighted. Um, giving them a period of time to tear it down, and if it's not torn down, then uh, then sadly we uh, have legal remedy to uh, condemn the property and acquire it, tear the building down, and then distribute whatever remaining proceeds there are. It's a nuclear option, I know. Uh, I hope we don't do it. I hope we can still work together with them. Um, but that is something else alongside Cox Road that we had offered to do at town expense that we still have not been able to get there. The school system ain't the problem. They're agreeable to it. But, um, there it is, but uh, the building is blighted. The, the ceiling is completely collapsed in the building. And, um, the school board offered to support getting our tipping fees waived, but that doesn't actually mean getting our tipping fees waived. It does not That's mean right. you get the tipping fee waived. That's the Board of Supervisors action. Has there been any word or motion or anything on that? We have not. I don't think it's been brought up yet, has it? Pardon? Has, it, has that been brought up to the county? Mm -mm. I think we maybe talked about it, but no, there's not no, been a motion. No, 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 and now no, it's 42 no. bucks a ton, and it's appreciably more expensive. Yeah, again, there's a lot, a lot of irons in the fire right now. A lot of, a lot of unknowns at the county level that are going to have repercussions here in Crew mm -hmm. and Brookville and, and where else. Which leads us to, uh, I, I assume, no action on the table. Okay, that leads us to item number uh, five: the Nottoway County Water Supply tomorrow night. Uh, I'm sorry, Wednesday. I mm -hmm. believe at six o'clock. Uh, I think it's 6 o'clock in Burkeville Town Hall. I've it's been in the Burkeville Town Hall. I've been told it's Burkeville Town Hall. Sean Davis called me this morning and told me that's where it was. There's going to be a meeting between the three towns and the county? Three towns and the county will be there. Um, you know, Burkeville has adopted an ordinance or a resolution stating they want the Board of Supervisors to approve Prince Edward County owning and operating water lines in the, in, the, uh, in Nottoway. Uh, as you know, you guys considered a motion and I included it in a letter which is attached in your packet. The reason I use that motion is verbatim Prince Edward County. We just took Prince Edward out and put Blackstone in. We took, and we've asked the county to permit the town of Blackstone to run water lines. They wouldn't even let us run a water line of Cock Road. Right. And we're asking them, but they're seriously considering uh, Prince Edward County being able to run water lines anywhere in Nottoway County anywhere. and serve literally any customer more absurdity and um i know the prison is intent on doing their thing but and if that's the prison's intention or crew's intention or burkle's intention that's okay but what we don't want them to do is next thing you know prince edward county is running a water line through our town right. or to dinwiddie county line those kinds of things your future sadly is not with our electric system that's a good cash cow but we have a very limited territory and so someday we're going to be built out on our electric system. Water and sewer, though very expensive capital and capital intensive, that's the growth and potential for the town of Blackstone because the <coughs> courts have determined what our boundaries are and that's what they are. 
until somebody changes that. But so we're trying to, what the town's doing for those who may be wondering is that right now the county has been given one, basically a motion to give Prince Edward County carte blanche authority all over Nottoway County and the town of Brokeville is on record supporting it. We want to give the Board of Supervisors a, a, a competing motion and see basically what team everybody's on. And, you know, we're not trying to stop Burkeville. If that's their, their, their future, that's cool. I don't blame them. And if crew wants to do that, that's cool too. And if the prisons uh, want to go to Prince Edward, we're, that's not us to, to decide. What our concern or the concern I'm sharing with you guys is carte blanche, Nottoway County from one end to the other, north to south, east to west, that they can right. run a line at their discretion at any time. Right. And that could be detrimental, significantly detrimental to the town of Blackstone, as this water issue is going to be hugely detrimental to the town of Crew. Right. Yeah, Crew is definitely the big loser. One, one thing that may come out of it, and I, this would be, I guess, a fallback position, I don't mind saying publicly, it might get to the point where if the county is, you know, pardon my language, damned and determined to do what it's going to do, at least the town might be able to draw, you know, when Philip just mentioned the electrical service territory is locked. That's because it's a map on file at the State Corporation Commission, and that baby's a legal document. It might be that we have to carve out anything that Blackstone has the right to serve, anything high school, anything school. east of the high school, at least to protect ourselves. Um, I hope it doesn't come to that. But I think it may very well come to water service districts in the county, because, um, but we won't know until y'all go to your meeting, the Board of Supervisors meets Thursday, so this is a busy week yeah. in Ottawa County. Um, All right. Uh, moving right along with the um, polling places. I got a Brownfield grant, I think, in there. Oh, I'm like sorry. This is, a, this is the grant the, for the armory. Agreement. Paperwork finally came in, and uh, we're asking that the Town of Blackstone Town Council consider uh, authorizing me to execute uh, an agreement which would prevent, provide $250,000 in grant funds to remove all asbestos, all lead-based paint, and one underground storage tank, fuel tank that's outside uh, from the armory. And um, the match is the one million nine hundred ninety-eight thousand dollars that the town intends on putting into the building, the two million, and about thirty-two thousand dollars that we've already spent over there in um, studies, and that we've already spent on uh, asbestos inspections. Um, I know last month there was a question about whether the administration could be paid. The administration can be paid out of that two hundred fifty thousand dollars. It is factored into the budget. What is not factored into the budget is that pre-inspection. For the asbestos that's our match and we've already paid for that so there's no additional cash out of pocket other than what has been expected which is two million bucks to renovate the building and that may be higher the way things are going but uh, the, the town managers requesting authorization to execute the agreement so moved. Mr. Nash's move is there a second, second. Uh, Ms. Jones is seconded I'll have a roll call vote starting with Ms. Williams aye aye aye, aye. aye. our motion carries five to zero Next, we have the item uh, polling places, and I think there's been a public hearing already held on this when we did the redistricting. Yes, but I think there were some questions, uh, and Jennifer got the answers from Mr. Reynolds up the uh, clerk or the uh, registrar's office. The question was, do people have to go to multiple places because we're going from five polling places to two polling right. places? And those same two polling places will mirror the ones that Nottoway County has. Okay. And his resulting response to, which is included, there will be ballots at each station. So if somebody is in one district townwide and a different district based on the county, they won't have to go to two places. Good. Okay? Good. Everybody just votes at one. And if you remember Mr. Miller, uh, Sheila's district, and uh, I think Annie's district would be voting at the primary school. Yeah, More or less. There's some, there's, some there, there's some isolated examples, though. Because the town wards don't directly correlate to the county Some precincts, don't. the county but districts. But if they go to vote in a, uh, there'll be a ballot for right. those uh, inconsistencies. Yeah, he was clear when I was asking him, and that so some of them would have to go to either right. the fire department, the police department, or the primary school. Mm -hmm. if, you, if John Smith shows up at the police station, and they say, oh, "Hey, Mr. Smith, how you doing? Oh, you're a res you 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 vote in Ward A." You know, and he's because there's going to be a handful of people that it doesn't. It's not all clean and clear that you know three of the five people uh, town wards voted the primary and the other two voted the uh, police. They're station. keeping five polling places on the completely. No, this is much better. And um, so he said there will be ballots enough for people at both. And he said the first year it might be a little, you know. Yeah. Um, it's a this is a really tough year for a license. Like a little trying the first year, but he said they would get to hang up. But 
redistricting. So people would not have to go to two places to vote. Right. If they do that, they're not going to vote but one time. Right. That's it, and I don't think that's legal either. No. No. Can't have people going to two places. You don't want to make it harder for people. No. To yeah, vote. I think that's yeah. If this plan, if this well, plan that we've been told so much. is what reality, what happens, and what will be fine. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to ask some questions to the registrar as we get closer to make sure. Um, and um, apparently last month, this uh, this code section, town code section for polling places, uh, describing Mr. Almond's district and uh, Carolyn's district would vote at the um, uh, police department. And the other three districts would be voting at the uh, right. primary school because of proximity, closest place to you. All right. And if um, we could get a motion to approve uh, where those five wards will be voting. All right. You've heard the town manager's report. Uh, I need a motion to that effect. So moved. Mr. Miller has moved. Is there a second? Second. Ms. Jones has seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Mm -hmm. The ayes have it. 5-0. Uh, Next, we, we had some um, annual bids, and we've had some kind of people withdraw after they were awarded bids, but basically all about grass which i believe is how stone has he was he won one of the contracts he withdrew because he looked i think he looked at his customer base and was concerned that he and i be, may not be able to provide the service to everybody so now alvis landscaping is a low bid of thirteen thousand. alvis landscaping was the low bid on the welcome sign planners but there was some concerns about was that just a one-time deal or maintenance i believe mr nash pointed out it was maintenance mm -hmm. throughout the year so mr room. alvis has withdrawn he was only a hundred dollars cheaper i believe and Clay's Garden Center would continue to maintain the planters, as you just say, welcome to Blackstone, wherever you come in. And, and I, would I ask that your motion to reject those two bids and then approve the award for you. need a motion to reject All About Grass for the uh, several town properties and to uh, give that contract to Alvis Landscaping for 13000 and then in the same motion um, reject Alvis Landscaping on the welcome sign planters and award that bid once again to Clay's Garden Center for $3,100. So moved. Mr. Miller has moved. Is there a second? Second. All right, we got uh, get the second to Ms. Jones. Uh, any further discussion? We'll have a roll call vote because it both exceed ten thousand dollars. Aye. Aye. Abstain. Aye. Aye. Motion carries four zero with one abstention. Um, next up, you have B and B Consultants. This is for storm water improvements. This is the eighty-seven thousand dollar ditch over at the uh, Northwest Avenue. Uh, to get this thing started, I'm not ready for the construction. I've got to save some money up um, before we can get to that. And we need to save a little bit more money based on the emergency procurement that you guys will see in a little while. So uh, I'm prepared to go ahead and start the engineering process, but the actual construction uh, will probably be a wintertime project this year, late fall or, 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 or in the winter, because I need to save $87,000. And we're going to blow you over here in a minute when we show you an emergency procurement that was very expensive. But you want approval of the task order for $7,000 for design and $300 for the easement plats? I need a motion to that effect. This that, is, is that part of the... This is part, part of the of the, This is part of the ditch that you vote against. Let me, let me correct. The three hundred was not in the 87000 The $7,000 was in the $87,000 for the engineering. Okay. So moved. Motion been made by Mr. Miller to... Authorize the town manager to uh, sign the task order. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Williams. Any further discussion? Uh, it's not $10,000 this part, so we'll have a voice vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. That motion carries three to two. Um, moving that, right along. Does this lock you in, lock us in, to the full scale project? Because the seven thousand dollars, you'll get a design, set of plans, and it'll be up to me to go and bid them out. Right. And uh, before we bid, we always get authorization to seek bids. That's correct. And so you'll get one more look at this thing before, and then you'll get another one to award the bid. The money was put in the budget, but y'all make and y'all vote <clears throat> vote against the, you know, the budget for that reason, and that's totally fine. That's good. That's good. But will there be more opportunities for discussion on this project? Moving right along to ongoing projects, dilapidated buildings, getting a lot of buzz about that. Oak Street, uh, I, I thought Tessie was going to be here, but she's not here to report on it. But I think Tessie is well on her way to uh, taking those property owners to court and proceeding with a condemnation process, which would actually, if approved by a judge, would allow us to take possession of the property. Uh, we would get a deed to the property. We would demolish the building and deliver that, which may be residual after the sale of the property, 
uh, to the property owners. And based on the amount of asbestos on the building, I don't know how much residual there's going to be, but they've been reticent to agree to work with us on any form or fashion, and so our hands are tied. So Oak Street is moving on into court. Nottaway Avenue. Where, whereabouts from Nottaway Avenue is this, this home? Address is 1003 Nottaway oh, Avenue. Oh, yeah, I know. We really talked about it. Yeah. 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 sits on that corner. The windows were broken out last year, and foundation is bad. There's really two houses that could take demolition, but the only one that has been declared blighted is a two-story white house. Yes, and I've spoken with Ms. Clay, and I think her sister, Ms. Greenhill, and they both confirmed to me that the White House is on its way. Very little asbestos in it. Shockingly, I thought it would be covered. Um, but I spoke to the asbestos contractor today, and he's been authorized to go ahead and get some vinyl flooring out of one bathroom, and that was it. The house next door is also owned by the same family. That's it's a cool. blue one-story house. It's covered in asbestos. So, but it's not been declared blighted, and it doesn't look horrible from the street. The backside ew, and inside, not too great. And I think their intention would be to tear it down, but I think the asbestos cost about $7,500 is daunting for them at this time. So the property owner is paying for it. Property owner is taking it down, doing the whole thing. Great. Great. Right. Now, the other proposition that you see, because hmm? I was told to ask you again about that. If the town was to pay that, if the town was to tear it down, first of all, it's got to be considered a blight, right? Well, it's got to be considered condemned. Okay. And our policy says if a building or property is condemned by the building official, that the town is entitled to go in and tear it down and put a lien on the property for the full amount of the demolition and removal, if condemned. I haven't asked Dean to condemn that one. I have asked him to look at the white one. He said, not condemnable, but I used the blight policy that was adopted year And blight, ago. again, for the public's benefit, is not something not looking, it, it looks horrible. That's not good enough. It's got to be structural, interior structural components visible from the exterior. And so they've got broken windows, they've got siding coming yeah. off, they've got all kinds of mess over there. So it's their intention, and I spoke with the property owners today, that uh, hopefully by Friday they have these business done. And I told them to please come get a demolition permit so we get the water and sewer cut off, yep. and the electric cut off before they start yanking it down. You've got a home on North High Street who has responded to the town, and they are going to begin work soon. I haven't seen any work start. It's at the intersection of High and Dimity Avenue. At the ice storm, a portion of a big pine tree fell on the front of the house, and it has not been rectified. Uh, she did speak to, I think, Jennifer and I on the phone one day, and I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it, but I haven't seen anything go, and she's got a period of time, and we told her we'd work with her. Does it meet the blight ordinance because of the damage? Oh, yeah. It's torn the front porch. Right? Front let's let's keep this on the agenda next month, and I, I don't mind telling you, I, I hate to be the bad guy, but... Um, I have two questions. I'm getting a lot of questions about a home we've discussed on South Main Street. And I'll answer that. I spoke with Mr. Wolf um, last week. He is uh, uh, in a care facility. Um, he indicated to me that there would be no work being conducted on the house anytime soon until he got out of that facility. Is anyone living in that house right now? I see cars parked periodically in that okay. driveway. And so at one time there was nobody. Wolf told me nobody, but I saw a van parked in the driveway today. So. Um, if we're prepared, I'm ready to go forward. And I think you guys have already authorized the public hearing, if I'm not mistaken. But I've been trying to tiptoe around it with people living in the house. All right. I think, so though, if, I mean, if we have a policy. If you're ready to go, we're ready to go. I mean, and Mr. Wolf, I think, is just not able to. No, I mean, but. The, I mean, it's been a really bad case of bad luck. The tree fell in the home two years ago, the town removed it. Um, he had a, I mean, a heart attack in which our officer saved him. I believe it was Tony Maiden and Lee Scott and some others. I mean, they brought him back to life. And he came to these chambers last year and thanked everybody. He said it's a real, um, real delicate situation, um, especially in a small town. But I am, you know, I'm just hearing a lot of people concerned about. The now, here's one thing I would caution you on. Someone's right? living there. I also question the safety of that. You have the option of not condemning it, taking it, and tearing it down. You have the option also that the town could put its own resources into fixing it up. I don't know if that's one of the options that you guys would want to consider, being that it's occupied, but, yeah. I mean, it could be pretty pricey. The it's a lot of work to be done on that house. How would the town recover its money if it's ever sold? I would assume that there would have to be a lien put on the property. Right. I don't think it would be satisfied otherwise, but um, we will certainly not be in first position to be paid if the property is ever sold. Uh, That's the, if you remember the warehouse that was torn down. Tussle, the Atlas exhibits on Tunstall Avenue. And we were, God, I think we were in sixth position. Or oh, but it got sold at a tax sale, so everybody got, got, it. got dropped. Let's keep that one on the agenda for next month for possible action. And also, um, different note, but I know our clerk does a lot of, our clerk 
does a lot of hard work on sending out letters for grass mm -hmm. and weeds, and we've had some, you know, we've had That's some. Danielle Carroll. She Carol, okay. Letter. How many, just roughly, how many letters have you sent out this year, roughly? 12, 20, 50? Um, more than that, about 20. Have any, uh, have, do we have any? Um, the compliance, actually. Has been better? Yeah, the guy on North Main cut his, and there were several others that I, were really sketching that have been cut. Yeah. Uh, we had a case There's on plenty more. There were two on Fall Street. They've been cut. Um, so any cases on Brunswick Avenue, my neck of the woods? Because we had a rather do a complaint. Okay. Oh, I oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, no, we haven't acted on that one. Okay. But I think the wisteria growth has exceeded the ten inch rule. Okay. And I just didn't. We let it go one time, and it's going to keep on coming. Mm -hmm. Every year we're going to do that again. All right. We're going to have to. But at least, at least, at least last year or year before last, when that issue was several months here at town hall mm -hmm. action was taken um it's right president. back it's not as, i don't know because i don't think you can see interior on the brick house i don't believe so i'm not i'm not sure is it is it a blight issue the brick house i wouldn't say so i don't see a structural problem there's just wisteria growing up the side of it but i don't see failing roof i don't see missing windows i don't see missing siding exposing structural components. and this time of year you see less because of the foliage is so thick but in the winter time like the, the white frame house back there um you but know. be prepared a letter is going to elicit a an appeal request and so yeah there'll be an appeal coming but I, but at this at this point i think we've been through it once so why not go through it again do it i just i mean just to be fair because mr michael bagley i don't see him here tonight but he's been very uh, conscientious about making sure that what we do in one part of town we do consistently throughout town and I think that's the way we got to be I think so too I just I mean, remember all the time though if they promised something would be done one time second time right keep that in mind correct correct good words Mr. Nash very wise um moving on to I'm gonna have a surprise under mayor's minute surely it's gonna make a lot of y'all fall out so I, hmm. I don't want to rush he's running um, under meals and lodging everyone no no outstanding meals tax or lodging taxes Rugglesworth uh, the, the concession stand we, is looks like it's about getting close to being finished I I pour, the, pour the concrete the and put the downstairs door on and put the roll-up windows the upstairs doors on too now it, it's, it's been put up and the steps are there but uh, I'd also like to talk street project very quickly which okay. was the item just before that I'm sorry I skipped uh, South Main Street project is underway as you probably have been told uh, they haven't even started putting the storm sewer in all they've been doing is relocating water sewer fiber and traffic signals that's they're finishing the sewer today when they start and I, I sent some stuff to the mayor you'll probably see it in the paper Wednesday on timeline as soon as they finish that section of sewer and they were about halfway there today when I went up there before lunch uh, I didn't go back this afternoon, but I dare say they will start the storm sewer construction at the south end, which is not quite the Ricks, but in front of the church parking lot. Great they will fact. start in that direction, those great big pipes. They expect to be able to install 24 feet a day. They will make it up to the intersection, the northern end of the intersection of 8th and Main, and then they will stop. And then they will fall back and run the storm sewer, and this is where you get the hate mail, which goes across main street to the ditch between community convenience and ricks okay once that's done then they'll come back and finish up north main so currently now that they have dug up and south main street put in a section or two haven't they put in a section or two of that big pipe because currently like after the rain saturday the road was covered it was flooded there's nowhere for the water to go right well if you look the reason for that is the storm drop inlet that's it's coming well they put a, a screen over it and gravel to keep dirt from running into the storm sewer and that's probably why the water wasn't going in there if you go there and look it's like chicken wire with when they run the pipe underground across main street are we still going to have traffic flow that just will that be just one lane at a time but that have to do one section at a time and then move it over it's going to be a bugger yeah so either way the coordination is going to be a headache and it's going to be inconvenient for several days but no detour but you don't think we're going to have to have flagmen where you're like i think they will have some have flagmen flagmen that's going to mean, you know what that's going to mean, though? The reality of it is going to be the, those Blackstone drivers who are smart are going to avoid it and they're going to drive down Lunenburg Avenue. I was going to ask if we still have those temporary temporary uh, traffic abatement devices. Yeah, tra well, yeah, we do. What's that? Temporary, temporary traffic, traffic there's traffic calming devices. Traffic calming devices. Yeah. We can put them up like on 10th Street or something. Yeah, that's a great idea, Jake. Excellent idea. Very good, very good. So that's and then the other street, we talked a little bit very quickly. Um, 
paving South Main Street from Dinwiddie to Irvin last week of August and be bumped on picket court would be included in that activity. <coughs> very good, very good. Um, uh, the only other thing I had a question on Rigglesworth, is Rigglesworth, the Gators still under the mindset of no football this fall there? No football? football this fall. I don't think the grass will be ready. Okay. And as we've talked several times, there's gravel, there's little pieces of glass. There's, so no, there's, no there's plenty of work to do over there, but we just can't get any grass to grow. All right. Uh, under East End, Chastity is working on some more surveys. Um, that's well, that's actually Taylor's bottom where she's doing that. But, I'm uh, skipping. I'm sorry. My, my computer's not acting right. There have been building permits issued for two new homes. There will be two demolished. One is a branch property on Fitzgerald Street. The other is a Hardy property on Harris Street. Um, those two will be demolished and new buildings built, and those issue, permits have been issued. And the three other dwellings underway, including Robert Hardy's home on Dillard Street and a duplex located on Tavern Street. Uh, design of the curb and gutter is underway, and concrete work will be bid out on or about Labor Day. Dramatically reshaped that neighborhood. I'll tell you, it uh, really looks good. Mm -hmm. It's been a. And so, you know, curb and gutter, there's $465,000 of grant money going towards that curb and gutter wow. project. That's not all town money. I'm sure, that looking at everything else that's price wise, I'm sure there'll be a contribution from the town in addition to finish, but there are $465,000 of grant monies for that curb and gutter project. And then getting to Taylor Bottom, Chastity is conducting surveys. How, how is it looking right now, the interest in the? Well, everybody that's completed one is interested. It didn't even matter if they qualified or not. Everybody wants to get the work done down there. I actually went out Saturday morning, did the left survey Saturday morning as well for those that do work um, during the week and are home on the weekend. Right. Um, I've had, uh, I've gotten back roughly 35 to 40 of the surveys. There's approximately 57 homes down there I'm just waiting for the last how, how many homes approximately 57 wow oh, okay um, it'll be a two-year or two application game. And Ms. Wynn has some applications too mm -hmm. and we're yeah. talking Sullivan Carver Taylor streets basically all three all three streets um, I'm also in the process of getting the application started so we're just going to get those applicants in so when we do start applying for the grants we'll have people already lined up fantastic okay and the water portion of the project there's storm, water, sewer, streets, obviously. This is going to be an expensive one because there's long roads and all that sort of thing. Um, and like I said, we'll have to break it up in two-year applications. It'll be a, a four- or five-year project just like East End has been. Um, Curb and gutter? Will this include curb and gutter? Yeah, that's what people want. They, yes, everybody tells me. I think they see Miller's neighborhood and say, man, this looks nice. <laughs> so everybody asks me about curb and gutter. Curb, curb and gutter. Um, it would, expectation would be paving curb and gutter, water, sewer. We have applied for grant and loan monies for the water in the neighborhood. Okay. The sewer is operated, uh, is, is supervised by DEQ, and they have not put a call out for infrastructure money yet. So we have applied for the water, but not for the sewer. So we'll see what happens. All right. Under the armor, you're requesting next month that the MOU between the town and Virginia State University be presented to council for we hospitality? It's uh, going to be an amazing opportunity over there. And there is an MOU that has been approved by their department head mm -hmm. for the hospitality program. It's been approved by, did the president say grace on it? The president spoke grace on it at Juneteenth, but we're waiting, we're waiting, waiting for the provost. the provost to sign it. And once signed by the provost, we'll bring it to you at the next council meeting. It's going to be a, a huge opportunity and a huge footprint, we hope, of Virginia State University. We had talked to Averett, and they kind of blew us off and it's because really didn't follow up. But Virginia State has been there from the first time Chastity contacted them, and they're ready to go. And we want to train some folks how to work at these hotels and facilities and things, and not necessarily just in Blackstone, but Raj Patel has a large portfolio of facilities. And yes. We've asked Raj to participate in uh, creating curriculum and that sort of thing. So uh, what we're about, excited um, about Philip, Virginia Tech, the young guy was here that um, – Pardon? The young guy was here um, talking about Virginia Tech, too. They had a program. Virginia State has a hospitality program. Huge program. Mm -hmm. but, I didn't know he was uh, talking about it. Because of proximity of Virginia State, and I think Chastity's Connections is where we ended up with that. Uh, I don't think we're done with monies. Okay. And one thing I would like the council to do, because I don't think we'll have another council meeting beforehand, we're going to wrap up ViewMax industrial revitalization. This is not in your packet, but we have found two grand opportunities we believe we're going to be eligible for the armory. Uh, one of them is a rural business enterprise grant has a rolling application, mm -hmm. rolling application so we can apply at any time. And it's our expectation for up to $250,000 of eligibility. 
We would like to apply for the things that Virginia pays for on a reply. That's not in the budget. Kitchen, I mean. Kitchen, refrigerator, freezer, tables, chairs, linen, silverware, all those things that we haven't thought about. We thought about it, but we haven't earmarked any money for it. Right. We're, we're asking permission tonight to apply for the United States Department of Agriculture's Rural Business Enterprise Grant for up to $250,000, just application. In addition, we also believe once we wrap up VUMAC, which is the work is done, literally, yeah. we're waiting on monies to come back and to close the deal because the water, the sewer, the electric, and the uh, sidewalk have all been completed and a storm drainage has been put in. Um, we think we're going to be eligible for another IRF grant for the Army, and we'd like the authorization to apply for up to $600,000, and that is due August 18th, and that would go towards construction, because I think we're going to be there to show it on the construction. I'd authorize, I'd, I'd entertain a motion to that, those those two projects, the town manager's requested. So moved. All right, we'll give Mr. Miller the motion, second to <laughs> Ms. Jones. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And the reason we haven't pursued those previously, because once we have that MOU in hand, that goes a long way towards going downtown and saying, we got a use for this thing, and this is exactly what it's going to be. It's not for sock hops. It's not for hosting the prom. We're going to train students. Right. But won't, won't there also be that opportunity, though? There will be opportunities if someone wants to have an event there. They will oh, still yeah, be able to have an event in the armory. But, but what this does, it, it erases the notion that many people thought, understandably, that it was going to be just a wine and cheese club. It would be seldom used, and it would be a, a, a giant you know, uh, loser for the town money-wise. Here it's going to be educating helping fill the need in the economy, providing trained workers, and being able to be rented for a prom. And it's our expectation Virginia State would be the person you communicated about your They payment. book it. They book. Their students would be able to create budgets. They would be able to run front of house costs, um, how, to, how to factor in taxes, all those kinds of set up. And then you have back of house, which would be the actual culinary and, and the cooking side. But this is not an associate degree. This is not a bachelor's degree. This is more of a certification based on the American Restaurant Association <coughs> guidelines. And uh, you walk out of there with a certificate saying, I understand food safety and I understand all these right. all the things. Outstanding. <coughs> Moving on to weatherization, the town manager has a request for uh, a 916 Fall Street. Uh, we have, and that's a Mr. Blunt. He was the next on the list. And 916 Fall Street, uh, we have the money saved up. We have authorized. Uh, uh, Earl to go ahead and do the write-up to bid it out, um, but we have not bid it out yet. Um, but we have done the asbestos inspection. I think there's going to be some asbestos costs in this one. And, uh, Patterson's. Pardon? Patterson's. The Patterson's. Well, that's the second part of what I've got on here. We've been holding on Patterson because what we did with the weatherization from Mr. Blunt is the 50000 from last year that we didn't spend and 50000 from this year. That was our first priority, and we put $50,000 already aside since July 1st. Okay. And that's $100,000 for that project. Ms. Patterson, I don't have an exact cost for her. I can tell you, Mr. Blunt, if his house is similar to that that was built on Harris Street, it's about $95,000. Okay? But for Ms. Um, Patterson. Ms. Patterson on Patterson Street, who, is, who we were trying to address next, uh, we've asked the county to provide $50,000 of their weatherization, or excuse me, of their program income that's been sitting in their coffers for. 15 years, 20 years perhaps? Yes, 20. And they've just been sitting on the money, and we asked if we could have 50000 of it to do another half. And we were proposing to do Miss Patterson's house down on Patterson Street. In addition, so you know we're doing a little bit around. Uh, we're trying to spread out the good cheer. Um, we have signed a contract uh, for a home to be renovated. It's a Maddox home on Carver Street. And they've already got the roof on the house, if you've been by there. They've already done the roof, and there'll be a handicapped bathroom on the back of that house. Oh, very good. That's being paid for with program income. And everybody pays their monthly bill, $20, $25, $50, whatever it is. That money is kept in their account. And, uh, so will that person begin then paying into the... Yeah, but her, I don't want to give out anybody's vital yeah. information, but it's not be a lot. Because remember, it's based on the ability to pay. Right. right. So Some folks are just paying 25 bucks. 25 bucks. She right. may be 25 bucks. Or, right. Or but it's paying something into the coffers so something. the next person. And Mr. Blunt, it. same thing. Because he's weatherization. He has to pay back because that is a town. But these block grant houses that we're doing on the East End, Governor Northam waived the, hey. the payments during the pandemic. And that has not been changed by Governor Youngkin. So nobody's making a payment over on the East End or... So what about these houses we doing now? Are they gonna pay or what? Yeah, they're free. Okay. 
which affects the program income then, correct? Yeah, it takes away your program income, you won't collect any. So, uh, so but weatherization and program income, right. we, do, we make payments back. Yeah. Okay, so <clears throat> just so I'm clear, you're using two years <coughs> for weatherization for one house? For one house, because the house should be about $100,000. So you're building a whole new house out of it? It's a brand new house, that one's coming down, it's a real mess. It's on Fall Street. Is that a one or two? One or two you putting in there? Is that a one or two bedroom house you putting It'll in there? It'll be a two bedroom home. Got a green roof? No, we've got a blue tarp. <laughs> is, that the, is that the one the tree fell through? No. That's the oh. one all the way down on the end. That's on the right down there. Down, down on the you end, down there where uh, Gus, Gus Blackwell lives. Miss Patterson. But if you don't That's right. No. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wait till next year. Okay. No, come on up a little bit further. Uh, what's the latest on the one with the tarp? Or with the, uh, not tarp, but where the tree fell through it? Uh, the gentleman has signed the agreement, but let it tear down. It's condemned. He signed the agreement, but he never got his signature oh, notarized. And will not respond. We've had Tessie send him a letter, and I still haven't heard anything from him. I got a feeling we're going to have to take him to court because he didn't get his signature notarized. On the corner okay. as well. All right. Anything else on weatherization before we go to new business? Last thing on housing uh, 819 Fall Street is not in great shape, but it is uh, up for tax sale. So I'm not getting in there and spending a bunch of money and then not get paid back. So there's a eyesore down there at 819 Fall Street that uh, I'm just standing back because it's been advertised for taxi. Very good. Moving on to new business, we have just a few items. We have a town shop request for an easement. I guess this is Dave McCormick requesting the easement to come and go across the property for as he's renovating. Yep. And uh, I saw their, their site plan and they had proposed a dumpster in there and I told them, no, you can't put a dumpster in an ingress, egress easement. If you needed to drive through, don't put the dumpster there. So uh, it is strictly for ingress and egress and no permanent, other than pavement, no permanent improvements. How are they looking, Tom? What are, what are you hearing about that project? I see a little bit of progress. I, I think he's going to move on. I, I have every indication that he's started the demolition. He got put a stop worker, Dean put a stop worker on because he um, didn't have an asbestos inspection. So he's gotten that done. Now he's doing the rest of the. How many apartments are we authorize him to go up to 30? He, he's going to do 25. His site plan shows 25 units plus the outdoor restaurant and the indoor restaurant. Do we think that brewery is going to happen? Okay. So I had some concerns from my, my neighborhood for uh, having a fence across the back, but that's a commercial requirement anyway. So I think it is a commercial drive. requirement that it needs to be. That's correct. It, it, commercial it be abuts residential. Yeah. And there's a pseudo fence there now behind some of the property, but uh, he'll put up something else. Town manager's request and authorization to execute the documents for Dave McCormick and the town on the easement. Yeah. Mr. Nash has moved. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Allman has seconded. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. Mm -hmm. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Number two, we have emergency procurement. Just a little $219,000. We have one of the generator. We have two electric generators that are located on West Entrance Road. And the VEMA group that we purchased our power from determines when we run and when we don't run. And typically in the summertime, when it's very hot in the evening, you run. And in the wintertime in the morning, when it's very cold, you run. And what we try to do is reduce the peak because we get billed as a, a, as a, a generation meter. You get billed on your highest usage during the course of the month, okay? Just like you would at McDonald's or something like that. And so way electric companies recoup costs because they have to produce this electricity at the most expensive time with the highest demand. With our generators, what we do is we try to reduce that demand. We feed electricity into the system so that we're not buying as much power at peak times of the hot summer or the cold winter. Okay? They call it shaving the peak. You don't think shave, shave, you're shaving that peak down. One of the generators blew up, basically. We had the, uh, the uh, radiator go out, the fan on the radiator. We did not have a pressure sensor on it. All the fluid ran out, so it didn't activate the sensor and the alarm. We have an individual that's at the site whenever the generator's running, but he was outside, and we looked in, spray. The bad part is not the radiator, the other thing, it blew the heads on. Was this one of the 1990 generators from the original time? The original generator. Yeah. Okay. It 89's when it opened. Did I hear correctly, though? This is not to replace the generator. This is just to repair. To repair right. the generator. <laughs> this is just to repair. $218,000. Because we're billed by VEMA, and when we're not running, or we're running only at half, we only get half the benefit of running, I authorize going ahead, we got to fix it. And we're asking that you declare this emergency procurement, sole source, because CAT is the, the sole provider of this service, and I'd like you to ratify uh, the decision to go ahead and award this as an emergency procurement. 
Just 218,000. 968.18 cents. Yeah. We have $136,000 saved up in the electric department's uh, uh, depreciation fund, uh, and then we anticipate setting monies aside for the next several months to get it paid off. So we're not anticipating, hopefully, not having to use any reserve funds. Just using funds that we've set aside for the electric depreciation. I mean, we're part of BEMA. I mean, this is part of our deal. We're probably contractually obligated to do this, are we not? We're contractually obligated to run those generators. Yeah. Can this be an insurance plan? Pardon? Can this go through insurance? Yeah, I mean, we certainly try. If if it hasn't been already submitted, I don't know if we committed it. We can make a motion to authorize to ratify and also ask uh, have it include staff at contact the insurance company. Mm -hmm. and large amounts of insurance. And I would like to say something. The only thing is because of the age. I've got a feeling it would be a normal wear and tear situation, but we'll submit it. So the second part of the question is, do the rest of the generators have pressure sensors? <laughs> they do now. Okay. <laughs> Great question. <laughs> well, thank you, now. Jake. Great job. Um, I did, we need a motion to uh, ratify and contact insurance. So moved. Mr. Jones has moved. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Allman has seconded. Any further discussion? Roll call vote, starting with Ms. Williams. Aye. Aye. Motion carries 5-0. We have control burn, which I believe we discussed previously. Mm -hmm. New business number four is USDA police car. Uh, we're asking to, as we do every year, to allow the town uh, staff to apply for a police car grant, which would be a fit, likely would be a 55% grant, 45% loan with a total price of the purchase of the vehicle and the outfit of $49,500. There's a resolution, I think Jennifer is included, and we're asking that you adopt the resolution so that we can submit. All within the budget? Yes, that car's in the budget. Which, what type of vehicle is it? It's is gonna be uh, one of the SUV types. Is it 49 total or is that 49 cost to the town? Because I remember we no, that's get 49 cars total. 25, I think. Yeah, but these SUVs are more expensive. And when I went back and looked and Chief confirmed, the last one we bought was $42,000. The vehicles have gone crazy in price. That's why I was asking. 49.5 is a total purchase price, 55% grant, 45% loan. Is that all outfitted? The 49.5 should be outfitted, yes. The 42 is what we paid for the vehicle last time. Now, if the price of the vehicle comes in way, way more, then it probably won't include the full outfit. Ms. Jones is moved. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Nash is second. And we'll need a roll call vote because it's more than $10,000. Aye. 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 Motion carries 5-0. Committee referrals. Um, we've only got six months left of this term. Um, so I have recommended uh, that they stay the same. And if someone would like to swap with somebody, they could, we could talk about that next month. But I just feel like there's no need we're going to have a new mayor, uh, another yeah, council. Yeah, yeah. Um, don't let everybody cry once. It's okay. I'll, I'll, be, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll be there. You're still going to be the mayor. <laughs> Which brings me to Mayor's Minute. I'm going to surprise everybody. I'm going to surprise some people. I have been covering local government as a reporter for 32 years. And when I first became mayor in 2006, the pay of this body is what it is now. Members of council today in Black Center pay $1,500 a year and the mayor is paid $2,000 a year. I, being lame duck, I'm gonna recommend that this council advertise for hearing in August when it's permissible that the pay of a council member and the mayor each go to 3,500. I don't think the mayor is any more important than the council members. I think we are all equally important, different roles. There's a lot of things that the mayor does that are not seen. A lot of things the council members do are not seen, but the council members do meet way more than the mayor does with all the committees. And I think that's, a, I th that's my proposal. If y'all want to go more or less, but I, I don't mind. I, and I've discussed it with nobody. I've discussed this with no member of this council. I just feel like it's right. And also part of the reason I feel like it's right is because I do go to a lot of government meetings. I do see how various governments operate. Um, um, I would put this council and its staff uh, above any government body that I cover. And that includes even other counties. So I would ask council to do, uh, I think by law you have to, no council can give itself a raise, Correct. but this council can take action that when the next council of mayor take, take office, and I will not be part of that, that the pay can be. Um, so we're I, going to effect January 1. Right, going to effect January 1st. Would it go in effect January 1st? Mm -hmm. So this, this, that's the new quarter. You, you have to do it no sooner than four months before the next, you cannot do it any closer than four months, I believe. Yeah. Four months of the election. 
Or would it go in effect with the budget? That's is it four months of the election? I'll read it just so that everybody's on the same page. No increase in salary of members of council shall take effect until July 1st after the next regularly scheduled general election of council members. Mm -hmm. Every proposed increase in the salary of a council member of council shall be adopted at least four months prior to the date of the next municipal election, except in the cases of newly created consolidated cities when the proposed increase shall be adopted so, at least two months 